And just like that, we are back inside the film room, ready to learn from Chris Sims' big old brain in between weeks three and weeks four. What? You in a better mood today? Wait, are you seriously on? Yeah. You're not in my ears or anything. And I oh, had no music. So, hon, you were perfectly talking under the music. That was you unbelievable. Had no idea the music was going on, and you stopped right as the beat dropped. No idea. That's incredible. Oh, Can you hear now us now? I'm on. Look That's at that. Awesome. You literally <laughs> landed that perfectly. I just saw You it. literally stopped talking and then the beat dropped. It was Great. incredible. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. You, you just okay? have a better mood today? Yeah, I'm you good? A, I'm in a better mood. I got people coming up to me at the office and saying, you know, is Chris okay? Yeah, well, yeah, people you know, listen. Yeah, okay, good. Deal. Deal with it. Chris likes to do his job. When Chris can't do his job, he gets pissed off. It was a big week. We had some cool stuff for the show, which you guys will see later. We hung out with some New York Jets. We played some games. I hope you guys checked out the new episode of Sims and Lefko, the show, uh, Wednesday night. It's on YouTube right now. Uh, check it out. We The last episode, we welcomed a new informant. We learned a lot about Bill Belichick. And we a, did. Who a, is this informant? I don't know. But a tantalizing obsession with saltwater taffy. Maybe that's the reason the Patriots are losing. Uh, we also got to do sack face, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and we hung out with DeMarco Murray and Chad Johnson. So make sure you check that out. Sims and Lufko, the show. And but T.O. I, yeah, and T.O. Uh, but I want to do some quick announcements. Uh, we have a little, it's a kind of a gift uh, for the Sims and Lufko faithful and mainly the people that are in the Sims and Lufko fantasy league. Uh, Odell Rogers is now two and one. Bam. So we have Sims and Lefko Fantasy League shirts. They are now on sale, and it's we have a deal for the 392 members of the Fantasy League. Uh, but really, it's open to anybody. Sneeze by Sims. But mainly for the owners, we talked to Bleacher Report, and we wanted to make a gift for everybody. We want to get everybody a t-shirt and we convinced Bleacher Report that we're literally not going to make any money on these shirts and we're not going to charge any shipping and handling. Wow. So we wanted we're to nice. We wanted to give shirts to everybody in the fantasy league at the exact cost that we're paying for them. So that's going to be $19 and I'm going to give you the website. It is the loyalist.com slash SLFL 2018. And you can pick out whatever you want. Loyalist.com slash SLFL 2018 on the front. It will say SLFL and then the year. And on the back, you pick the name of your conference and your conference will be on the back. Oh, so I like if somebody it. in our conference wanted to get the, like gold, the golden spleen right. conference, right. it will say it on the back. So everyone that's in the SLFL, it'll be $19. And with the promo code fantasy, the shipping will only cost $3. So minor correction. Great speech left go. Three dollars worth of shipping, so it's nineteen bucks for the shirt. Promo code fantasy. So three bucks gets twenty two. Stop interrupting. You said you have a problem. You said originally you that there was no problem. shipping cost. Yo, yo, shut up. You have a shut problem. Up. Josh. You have I don't have a any problem. 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 I don't have any problem. <laughs> so it's three dollars shipping, and this is everywhere I, in the world. Anywhere. Hold on. No, like so he like, legitimately got mad at you though. He I know. Did. He did. So <laughs> so like even yeah. the guy that's playing fantasy in Dubai. Shipping is only going to cost you three dollars. Wow. Yes. Are you sure about that? We're hooking it up. I, I um, think he's talking out of his ass. No, no, no this is one. true. This is <laughs> this is, is on the script. Okay. So loyalist.com slash SLFL2018. If you guys are not in the league, but you want a shirt and you there's a certain conference that you think is funny, go ahead and buy it. The promo code works for you. One note. We did have an, a conference called the Ursi, Ursay's Oxys Conference. Oh, yeah, right. Can't put that on can't the shirt. Can't put on a shirt. We're a company. Okay. We can't be that crazy. So what's the name of it now? The Ursay Conference. The Ursay Conference. Oh, well done. Uh, yeah, so we had to do that. Uh, but yeah, the shirts are out there. The loyalist.com slash SLFL2018. We took care of all the bullshit costs. You get it at cost. It's kind of a gift for us to you if you want to represent your fantasy team out there in the world. Team Odell Rogers, we are 2-1. and one, And our new quarterback, Sims, with Jimmy G going down, ba -ba -ba. we got Ryan Tannehill. Okay, I'll take that. You'll take Tannehill. I'll take it, yep. Uh, wait, $3 for Dubai shipping? I'm still caught up on that. That's pretty amazing. Are you sure I mean, not real? all the shirts are going to Dubai, all but right. I know one of them is. We, is. we have one guy that listens we to us in guy. Dubai. Yeah, he listens to us I mean, in people Dubai. are literally all over the place. Man. New Zealand, Canada, Australia. These shirts are going everywhere. I'm I think... afraid to go to Dubai. 
Why is that? Because like people have been like arrested and thrown in jail for finding like a speck of marijuana in their luggage. Like mm. that scares me. That scares By the way, you? I didn't yeah. I didn't tell you guys that'd be an issue. Well, something that could anything that way. I didn't tell you guys, but I made some moves too. I picked up Darren Sproles, Jalen Richard, and Hayden Hurst. What are I your think thoughts? Hay- I mean, what are your thoughts? I picked up Hayden Hurst because I go, this is a first round pick, and he's coming back from injury. I'm sure they're going to weave him back into the offense. Yeah, and it's not like Ricky Seals Jones has been killing it for right. us. Yeah, and Jalen Richard and Darren Sproles. I went. Darren Sproles got a lot of touches that first game. Yeah, maybe they'll weave him in, and the wide receivers aren't that good. I just picked some guys up. Okay, that's cool. All right, oh, I'm, I'm down not, with that. I haven't really been communicating with no, you good. guys. That's good. Do your thing. But that's we're right. two and one. We're yeah. being carried by Thielen, Odell, and Juju. I, I like that. The three headed monster I of our like wide that. receivers has been it's perfect. Us. Oreo cookie. Cookie style and all is yes. awesome. I'm so glad that that's that way. Uh, more announcements. Shout out to the DMs. I'm going to be honest. Fendrick and I, we had a DM that said, your social media manager should be paid more. Our social media manager is Fendrick and Lefko. Uh, but we, we got a little bit behind in the DMs. Uh, so we haven't been able to get to. We have about, like I don't know, 150 in there right now. Uh, but I want you to know that even if we don't get to all of them, keep sending them. We use that to kind of figure out more about the show. We read everyone. Yeah, what you guys want to see, what you don't want to see. We care about you guys more than anything. Same thing going for YouTube comments. We put on there, what film would you like to see Sims talk about? So we're going to make sure we do the Dolphins later because there was a number of people that said, how are the Dolphins 3-0? and That will be something I think we do in the future cool. where the Monday show we put out there, which, which what what do you want to see? And if we don't touch it on the Monday show, yeah. it'll be one, like a fan request. Yeah, please tell me what to watch. I would like to know the, the order in which to do it. And- yeah. It is. And the then uh, Dolphins are fun, fascinating team. Oh, they really are. They kind of remind me a little bit of the Bucks, where they score a lot on big plays, and I don't know how consistent that is in the yep. long term. Right. But I will say that I like what Monken's doing. I think that's his name for Tampa Bay offensive coordinator. And wow, Adam Gase can coach a team without Jarvis Landry and Dominican Sue. That's mm. so crazy. I wonder if there was any podcast that even put their hard-earned dollars on the Dolphins going over a seven-game win. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then Fendrick wrote in that Survivor's back. Oh. Premieres tonight on CBS. Awesome. I'll be doing Fantasy League updates on Twitter if anyone wants to watch. I will I know be, you guys will watching be watching Survivor. anything but that. I'm surprised you read that. I just put that in there to see if you'd read it. I you figured you'd. Where's where are they at? Excited. Where what island are they? Uh, start? I don't even know. They don't they don't play up the location anymore. No, they don't. Nah, I think they're, they're in. Survivor this year is in Zimbabwe. And then they show like a zebra, and they're like, it's gonna be the wildest Survivor yet. All right, let's they're move on. In Let's go. Deception. Disney, Disney World, Space Mountain. Has has there ever been two Survivor <laughs> cast members that have gotten married? Yeah, Robin Amber. Oh. Yeah, that was Heather- way way early on. They did Amazing Race together too. Has there ever been like a issue yeah. of a lot of sex? Oh, I don't know about a lot, but Robin Amber was definitely a thing. Hot and heavy. Yeah, very hot and heavy. Who's the most famous former Survivor contestant? Uh, I mean, Richard Hatch, Naked the first Richard winner, Hatch. went to jail. Yeah. For um, what? I think tax evasion. Oh. Um, he's probably. I mean, and then no one's really famous. You're saying famous. a winner, a winner. No, anybody. Oh, well, Jimmy Johnson was on there. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, there have been Brad Culpepper was on. <laughs> yeah. There have been football players on. Damn, Brad Culpepper yeah, Culpe- was on there. Culpepper did it with his wife. Oh, they did. So I could see that. Yeah, they did the uh, blood versus water season where they were on different tribes and then they came together. Oh, I could see that. He, they... he was like a crazy survivor. And well, Monica, he's Monica, crazy. I think one. It, is that yeah. right? Yeah, they're crazy. There was always a lot of crazy stories about them in Tampa. Actually, oh, we, should, we yes. should do that at some point. Culpepper well, stories. Well, if you're not excited by that conversation, you may be excited to learn that Atlanta. Ooh, Super Bowl week. Tell us more, Lefko. Uh, I'm just going to say that we are planning on probably having, just like we normally do on Super Bowl Radio Row, like 50 to 70 guests. And I think we're going to be doing shows pretty much Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a Super Bowl week. And I think we're going to have our own little place that's only ours. And there's not going to be media credentials. And in between the shoots, maybe you're going to hang out with us. And maybe we do live shows where we only talk to the podcast listeners that show up. Maybe we have exclusive stuff that we don't even put out. Maybe you get to go, holy crap, they're interviewing Von Miller two feet in front of me. It's all possible. You don't even have to go to the game. Atlanta, Super Bowl week, little birdies in my ear. Correction, Monica came in second place. She did not win. That's okay, my mistake. Good. Thank you for clearing that up. Sims, can you believe that Sports by Brooks tweeted today? I, I, I'm i pretty shocked. Right? Yeah. I did mean, you hear about this? Yeah. I mean, him tweeting Sports by Brooks is big time. I mean, big it's been news. five years. Damn. That's a long time. Yeah. 
I mean, I know you used to read his stuff all the time. All the time. I mean, you know me and the What are the things the that Twitters. you remember the most from sports? Oh, uh, him just yelling about you have no things. Idea who being, this is, right? I have no idea. No. So there's this guy. What's his name? His name is Sports by Brooks. Okay. Nobody really knows who yeah, he is. Right. He's like but, PFT commenter in 2010. Gotcha. But like, yeah, 2010, like he was as reputable online as Schefter. Like Sports by Brooks would like break things all the time. And out of nowhere. Like what, real things? Yeah. Wow. Okay. People would go to his blog all the time. He was like Mike Florio. Like that's like he was like Mike Florio, but of for all of well, we don't know who he looks like or anything. He's There's got a picture. one picture, yeah. and that's all we've seen. And for the first time in five years, he tweeted today. Like there were a lot of people that would write articles. Where did Sports by Brooks go? Yeah, that's his account. Huh. And he tweeted uh, in 2013, right here, November 11th, and then he hasn't tweeted again until today. Yeah. Wow. So these are the internet stories that you have no idea. Huge about. deal well, on Twitter today. Okay. Like, how Did about he the, tweeted something good for the first time in five he years? He tweeted the video of Willy Wonka emerging from his factory when he pretended that he had a cane and then rolled, which to me is him being like, I'm back, hmm. which is very interesting. Or he's about to abduct kids and throw them into chocolate ponds. That's disgusting. It's very possible very as well. Possible. Yes. Did you like Willy Wonka the movie? Uh, it was okay. It's like weird and trippy. It's cool in some places, and other places big... it's kind of like depressing and weird. I just well, I just did the entire binge watch of Maniac with Jonah Hill on Netflix. Talk about weird and trippy. That's a show. It was like a show series. Netflix. You don't have Netflix. I do. Oh, you do on every TV. Yep. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Smart excuse TVs. Me. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Apple. Yes. yes. All right. I got some random numbers for you. Number one, Sims. Yeah. That's the amount of three and out drives that the Rams have had this season. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I don't know how much you've read through my notes or whatever, but the question in the NFL right now is what is a more unstoppable force right now? The Rams offense or the Chiefs offense? Rams are they're unbelievable. I, I don't even know what to say. Sean Sean McVay is unbelievable. Do is, we want to get in that right now or what? Is Sean McVay yeah. the best offensive coordinator in the NFL right now? I think he is right now. I do. Because a lot of people will go, no, duh, it's Sean McVay. Right. But I know in your mind, it's typically a foursome. Yeah. Sean Payton, Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, Josh McDaniels. I do look at and them as co- being a step up. And of- they're a little interchangeable. Right. And there's the Nagy's and all that stuff. Right. But right. in your mind right now, McVay is number one. McVe- McVay is number one right now. Yes. And I, I, and one of the things I wrote in my notes, and I, I don't know if I'm going to get to it. Is it okay if we talk about this Please. now? Okay. Is, the, is that I wrote in, in about McVay, I go, he doesn't have like like Kyle Shanahan's the best play action guy of the group, right? He there's nobody he's nobody comes up with more ways in play action. Josh McDaniels is the best drop back. I'm gonna find little ways in the short passing game to just be surgical and drive you crazy. Wide receiver screens on the outside, the Edelman plays. All of that. Make you feel almost helpless. Right. Sean Payton's like the best at maybe drawing up shots for touchdowns. Like, Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, here's uh, – I got these plays. I don't want you to throw it long all game until I call this play, and think he'll be about, wide open. Think about the Willie Sneed bomb in the NFC Divisional game that he just missed thrown, but exactly. it was a perfect shot. Exactly right. So there's always those. And then McVay is like – not the best at any of them, but maybe second and third of all of them. And then added to the fact, like his screen game, like I'll say the screen game. I think the best screen game in football right now is the Jacksonville Jaguars and Nate Hackett and what he does. But yeah, McVay, there's no weakness to his offense. He doesn't have one area where I look at and go, oh, if he was a little bit more of a creative play caller in this department, right. they would be unstoppable. And and the game the other day was the perfect example. I mean, Speed sweep was the theme of the game. Like, you know what I mean by the speed sweep? Or, like, he's underneath the center yep. and Robert Woods flies by. Yes. He had – He had, like, three or four of those that he, were unbelievable. He, yeah, he had those. But it's what he has off of it that is where you just go, this is what's blowing this defense away. And that's where I become impressed. So you mean, like, a quarter later, they fake the Swedes. Or they might sweep. do it, like, four plays in a row. And they go, here's the speed sweep. Here's the fake speed sweep and the pulling guard and Todd Gurley runs down. Here's the speed sweep and fake the pulling guard and we toss it out the back door to Todd Gurley. Here's the speed sweep, fake to Todd Gurley, screen to Todd Gurley. Here's the play action pass with a deep post over the top with the speed sweep and the fake power. So his tree of yes. ammunition off of one concept yes. is what always amazes me. And the me. fact that he has an offense now with Brandon Cooks yeah. where Cooks, Woods, and Gurley are going to outrun most defenders. Mm-hmm. So you have three weapons. Cooper Cup is a great receiver. Right. But now he has 
Cooks. Yeah. And Cooks really is like what they always wanted Tavon Austin to be. Exactly right. He is. More polished, good receiver, has no weakness to his game. None. Can do it all. I think that's where I look at and that. And he's already been in Sean Payton's offense and Josh McDaniel's exactly. offense. I mean, Brandon Cooks has literally the greatest offensive coaching track record of any player in the NFL. It's amazing. And I think this guy's using his skill set better than anybody. I know why Sean McVay's the best. Yeah. Something happened after the Cleveland Jets game that it upset me, and it's coming back into my mind right now. Okay. Cleveland finally gets their first win. Yeah. Hugh Jackson takes the podium. Beyond the fact that he didn't name Baker the starter, was... I actually, but I actually, I, I got it. It's right after the game. Out of all due respect to Tyrell, whatever. You know what upset me? What? He was offended. That someone said you ran Philly oh, Philly. Oh, you're you're right. That was. Let me let me finish. Yeah, sorry. Don't interrupt yep, me. I'll shut up. Problem. 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 <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> he was offended that someone would say that he stole Philly Philly. I believe his quote was something to the effect of, "If you looked at my extensive play history and Todd Haley's extensive play history, look, we've had that play too." Sean McVay will actively tell you that he's stealing plays from people. If if I have an egotistical coach that can't even say, I really like that scheme, it reminded me of some of my under the past and I can do it, then your offense will remain the same stale offense it always has been. Yeah. It's the same thing with all thought leaders. Every thought leader will tell you, be a child. Always ask questions. Never think you're the smartest person in the room. Right. It's why Sean McVay has been so successful. No, He's no. not afraid of going, I'm 32 years old. Right. I can learn from people. Yeah. I'm going to go sit on the cooler and actually do like organize my offensive thoughts and let Wade coach. He came out this week and admitted that Jed fish is his play clock specialist, Mm. that he has a coach that only watches certain times of the clock and is an extra voice to go, Hey, be aware clocks running down, blah, 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 blah. A lot of coaches don't want to share any of this. Yeah. Right. And they, they, they run their offense. Yeah. We have to convince Michael McCoy to to have David Johnson play a little wide receiver. But I hear Hugh Jackson be too prideful to admit that maybe it was from Philadelphia. And here we are talking about Sean McVay that goes, every playbook is my playbook. It's the coach I want. I know. I hear you. I don't know why. Like, yeah, there's just better ways to answer that with you. I don't know why. Like, you could have answered that good. diplomatically yes. and been like, you know, we hey, Philly's not the first team to do that. I mean, they made it famous. We know that, but we've had this play. Whatever. Just say something like that instead of being like, like you're saying. No. No. How dare you? They stole it from me. Uh, I mean that. But I think your point about McVay too. That's what I find refreshing about him. There's no of the. Um, like no why ego. waste yeah, why waste your energy on oh I have to hide who my clock watcher is like everybody else in football like come on I'm just I I'm, I'm, I'm over that crap all the time like oh, you know even like Dirk Cutter this week Dirk we know Ryan Fitzpatrick starting what well, what are you like pandering about come on like the the Bears aren't going holy shit they tricked us it's it's Jameis. Rip up the game plan. The offense is changing. We're screwed. I have a fun quote. I just... So Mike Evans said that at halftime, they're down 20 points. Yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick looks at Mike Evans. They're down 20, and he goes, for some odd reason, I love fucking football. I love it. <laughs> and Evans said he looked at him and said, I'm with you. I love it too. <laughs> Fitzpatrick is – Yeah. I feel like Fitzpatrick is the the other. You remember the Wrangler commercials with Brett Favre? Yeah. I feel like Fitzpatrick would be the quarterback on the other team. <laughs> like he's just happy to be there. He and he's is. having a good time, and yep. he's balling too. I mean, he's making a lot of big time plays. And, and I'm his voice for Good Iron fun. Heights. And it's awesome. Did you see it? <laughs> I did not yet. Oh, yeah. That's good. I've been Ryan Fitzpatrick voice for the three years of Good Iron Heights, yeah. and I thought it was going to end three years ago. Right. And they're like. Hey, left go. We got a whole episode about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Like, I thought this was over. No. It's amazing we've done that many episodes of Gridiron Heights with yes. Ryan Fitzpatrick in it. Because I did he's one. He's a great character. I did one. Uh, it was like season two where it was like the 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 worn out QB lounge. Right. And like I was a bartender. It was Ryan Fitzpatrick, and he goes, uh, "Intercepted by the ground." <laughs> like we were making fun of how bad he is, and now he's this guy. Yes. I got another number for you. Yes. Thirteen. I like numbers. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yep. Do I get any hint here? Let's take a guess. 13. Dan Marino, um, 13. That, that's how many touchdowns Patrick Mahomes has thrown thus far. Oh, Dan, that was too easy. In I knew four that career games. Right. Meaning, according to Matt Budkowski, 
that Mahomes has more career touchdowns than Chris Sims in four games. Yes, he does. And really, three games. Ooh, three games. Year. Right. We, don't have to, we don't have to count out count uh, that last mop up duty game he had in Against his Denver. Yes. Yeah. What did I have? 12? 12. Damn. 12 and 17? What a sorry. Damn. I went into that year with 12 and 11. Or eleven and ten, <laughs> and you know, lost my touchdown. spleen. Yes, man. I had. I hey, listen. I threw some dumb interceptions. This is a random question. Too. You've talked before about you see quarterbacks out there and you go, man, I'm better than them. This sucks. Yeah. When you see a guy like Patrick Mahomes, do you go, oh, I could have never been that good? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. that's a, that's another level. Like I had, I had a chance to be special. I'll say that much, but. No, he is – and maybe you asked my dad this, and maybe he'd be the better person to, to actually answer this question. But, no, Mahomes, Mahomes' arm, I think even for me in my prime, I would be like, man, damn, I might be able to throw it that hard at times and do all that. But his ability just to whip it in so many different angles, that's where it's special. I mean, he excites me, like, beyond belief. When was the first time after college that you went on the field game practice and went, Holy shit, I'm not the strongest arm on the field. It actually never happened <laughs> until... <laughs> what a dick. No, I'm just I know. It, it really didn't. It did not happen until, until the first guy I ever had a sweat with on that whole thing, and this is another thing we could ask my dad about, was a guy at Texas named Chance Mock who committed to Texas the year after I got did there. Did you go to LSU? No, 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 there was a mock there okay, as well, okay. yes. But he was like the number one quarterback in Texas and stupidly committed there the year after me. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> but Chance, he was the first time I remember getting in like like warm-ups and doing like running routes versus air and throwing the ball and me going – how fucking dare you try to throw the ball as hard as me? And I remember going like, damn, he could really throw it. Holy cow. I'm going to have to start really throwing it out I here in practice. You start really throwing yes, it. Yes. But it didn't really happen to me at the NFL level until after my spleen. Mm. And um, when I went to the Titans with like Kirk, Kirk, Kerry Collins and Vince. Kerry Collins had a cannon. He had a cannon. And, and Vince did too. Vince, Vince might have not been always the most polished passer and all that. But I was there going, damn, my arm's not like – Pre post injury, not as special uh, anymore. What's the best compliment you ever got from Mac Brown? Uh, hmm. We had some good times together. I don't know. Chris, I really like you, man. Yeah, you're a good kid. Good times like, together. Yeah, things like that. Things, okay. Yeah, nothing special. Yeah, the best compliment I ever got ever as a coach was from John Gruden, and I still have the the newspaper article saved. Really? The year I'd be lo losing my spleen. I mean, I was killing training camp that year, like tearing things up. And then even to the point where I was like walking out the practice field and being like, man, I was fucking awesome today. Like I tore our defense apart. And, and I started knowing that the rest of the team and the coaches were wondering or, or realizing it too, because like the quarterback coach, Paul Hackett and Gruden, when we watched practice, they'd be like, I mean, how did you make this throw? I mean, what, what, you threw it and he was behind him. And then you, you knew he was like, so that's when I was like, yeah, they're starting to realize it. Um, and um, he made an article, a, a, a comment to a newspaper article down there that, like, they asked him about me, and he's like, "His arm's stronger than Favre's. It's stronger than Favre's. I, I, I've been in Green Bay. His arm is stronger than Favre's." So there is an article in and, your house? Yeah, it's in my house. I got it framed. Where is it? Uh, it's up in like my little Danielle's, you know, uh, bike sauna. Her, what's thing? her? Yeah, what the hell's that? Her Peloton. Her Peloton, where she watches her guy. She's got a crush on. Oh, the trainer on yeah, Peloton. She likes Alex on Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> I like though that you said that Gruden spoke to an article. Uh, all right, I got another. Right. I got another random number for you. Seriously, uh, six. Yes. Six. Yes. Damn. It's gonna be something obvious again. No, no this okay. is not one. Okay. Of the Patriots' nine draft picks from this past draft, yeah. six are now on IR, with Jawan Bentley going on IR. Six of their nine draft picks are on IR. That's scary. Duke, that, who, that, who, who else is on IR in that group? Do you have the not, list? No, 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 no. Okay, but Duke Dawson—that's the one I'm most tempted to see. And I don't even know where, what the status of his ability is because I really liked him coming out, and they need him at the cornerback position badly right mm. now. Um, but man, six. Yes, th that's a unbelievable number. I know. Now you got me looking yep. at it. This sucks. Yep. Good. Well, I know this doesn't include Rex Rex Burkhead. Yep. Man. It's all right. It doesn't matter. He's not on IR. I know that. Who? Oh, no way. He is on IR. Yep. He can't come back for a little while. 
All right, I'm going to do this right there now. There we go. Hey, guys, you enjoying this part of the podcast? It's brought to you by Sims. Sims, ask questions that Lefko has to search for. Right. Injured reserve. Okay. I think it's brought to you by Lefko gives us stats and doesn't have the fucking facts to back it up. Sorry right. for the F word. Damn. Right. Duke Dawson. I'm on fire here early. I think I've gotten eight curve swords in the first eight minutes. All right. Duke Dawson, Isaiah Wynn. Yes. Uh, Braxton Berrios. Be- the receiver, right, from yep. Miami. Um, I just said to Dewa- uh, Jawan Bentley. Bentley. And then I, I don't know if these guys were rookies or not, but Darren Andrews, Cody Hollister. I don't think Hollister is. Ulrich John, Christian Sam. Ryan Izzo, they got, they but, got eleven guys on IR. But some right difference now. makers there on IR. That's well, the big I mean, thing. guys that you know he he's able to find some of those draft picks. Yes. but yeah, those were the some numbers. Uh, news and notes: Akeem Talib and Marcus Peters both out for a month. Am I wrong to say that? Wade Phillips' defense revolves around the cornerbacks a lot. It, it doesn't, not as much as you would think. There, he's smart as far as not being an overly man-to-man. I'm going to put this pressure on my guys. I'm all just the used time. to it from Denver. I know, right? I know. It, it, it's a little different that way now. I think he he specifically plays a little bit more zone, especially with guys like Donald and Sue in the middle, because he just goes. Why am I going to give them the chance to just throw it up real quick or throw a back shoulder to where they can't create some havoc at times, which I don't think they have a ton of sacks in the Rams, but when you watch them, there's a lot of havoc. Quarterbacks are very uncomfortable all the time. It's always, I got to throw the ball now because I'm going to get hit. So how worried should Rams fans be that the two corners that they're so excited about are both going to be out for like a month? Yeah, I I don't look at it as like a huge game changer. That's crazy. I know, I know, because I think they're that good of a football team. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, I think they can make do with what they got there, right? Uh, they still got what? There are Nickel, Roby, Coleman. Yep. I think one of the biggest signings of the offseason, and I'm mad we haven't got to this already, but it is Sam Shields. I mean, Sam, Sam Shields was a good player. Remember, he got a concussion yep. and then got another one, and we didn't hear from him for a year. But he was at the time he got a concussion, he was still a good football player. And I know you love their safeties. I Lamarcus do love their Joyner safeties. And John Johnson. Right. And they can they can play some corner too, right? Like if needed by it. Lamarcus Joyner was a corner in college at Florida State. So I think that's where I look at it with there's still enough talent on the defense yeah. and he's a smart enough guy to to formulate something new for it. For me, if the Rams can lose both of their starting cornerbacks and not take a step back, if yeah. you don't think it's that big of yeah. a deal, then what is going to make them take a step back? Um, Aaron Donald? Yeah, something like that. Right. Aaron Donald, some Todd Gurley. That'll change things. Brandon Cooks would even change things at this point because so much of the offense is dictated That's through wild. him. I mean, So wait, I, I didn't even know all this. I knew Akeem was a month. Marcus Peters, they're saying a month too. I'm almost positive. Because Marcus Peters, I know earlier in the week they thought if the game was Sunday this week that there'd be a chance he could actually so play. Two, so it came out that he could miss two to four weeks okay. with the okay. calf strain. All right. I, I didn't think they were overly, overly concerned with that one. I think he'll be more towards the two weeks. Speaking of another team on Thursday night, Everson yeah. Griffin, yeah. what's going on right now? He's undergoing evaluation at a local hospital after battling a serious mental health-related issue for weeks. There's a ton of storylines. I don't know what the truth is. There's yelling. There's there's claims of, of I'm going to kill you at a hotel. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know why you missed the game, Buffalo. It sounds like we're really not going to know for a while. Uh, but this is something you've been hearing about for a while it, or well, noticing? It's, it's, I didn't hear about it for a while, but I just made a few phone calls. And, yeah, I think this has been something that's on the Vikings' radar for the last few weeks to a month, and it finally came to a culmination point of whatever disaster happened on Saturday. Man. Yeah, so it's, that's a shame. And that's a huge blow to that team. You know. Yeah, so, so here we are. We lose two corners. The yeah. Rams are fine. Yeah. Vikings lose Everson Griffin. What does that do? I, I I think that's a bigger loss than the two corners being lost really? with the Rams. Yeah, because I think so much is dictated about, you know, Minnesota's front four. Zimmer is not a guy that wants to really blitz. He wants to mess with your protections, put the two guys in the A gaps at times, so you have to worry about them. They drop out a lot. Maybe one comes here and there, but Everson Griffin's ability for them to, okay, we're going to get in your face with our first round corners and disrupt you with the line of scrimmage. And they're going to stay on you like glue uh, plays into, okay, well, we're going to have Everson come off the edge and let him just fly around there. You know, they have a little different defensive philosophy than Wade Phillips. And 
And then also with a Sheldon Richardson one-on-one. And then it just goes back to our whole thing of we're concerned about their depth overall as is. Like, I have a hard time believing Josh Allen would have had some of those plays that he had last week running the ball if Everson Griffin was out there. It's a big drop-off. Daniel Hunter is a fine player. The other kid they play there a lot in this chance is 91 Weatherly. I think I'm getting that right. Steve Weatherly. Right. Like another long, solid player, but not special. Everson Griffin makes their defensive line special, mm. and that's where I think it could hurt. Is it that he's that good, or it's game plan that it kind of revolves around? It, well, it, it's it's he's that good uh, for that kind of defense too. It's just they're about getting upfield, cr- causing that havoc. It's no read. It's just this is your gap, or go get the quarterback and. He comes around the edge as good as anybody in football. It's just funny that I feel like common NFL fans know to leave in Peters, and their loss isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. And I would say that Everson Griffin's well known, yes. but I don't think he's as well known as Talib or Peters. No. And yet his impact as one guy yeah. might be bigger than both of them being in. Uh, it, it, it is, and uh, you know I think the other thing it just goes to that is you know how your roster's built, and and the Rams have a roster that's built perfectly for the modern day NFL. I mean they have. Lots of fast guys on the back end to mix up how they want to play at safety or third safety or nickel, and they can do a lot of different things there. And uh, the the Vikings are are a team that's got a lot of big money guys on the defensive side of the ball, and he's one of them, but they lack depth there, and that's, that's going to be an issue. Uh, other big news, and I think this will be an interesting conversation, mm-hmm. and we'll see how much Sims can share. Jimmy G going down. Right. They had a workout for possible other quarterbacks. Ooh. One of them was Matt Sims. Yes. Uh, so I'm. I kind of want Josh to participate in this in a lot because yeah. Josh wrote down a lot of questions. Okay. Cool. So do you mind if we just ask you questions yeah. about how this process works? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So when Jimmy goes down, yep. Does Matt think in his head, "I could get a call right now"? I think he wonders. He wondered whether he's going to get a call. Me too. I I, I did because I, uh, Matt worked was on the practice squad with the yeah. Falcons. He was with on the Falcons. practice squad with the with Falcons, Kyle. right. Had the training camp there. Then the, the year they went to the Super Bowl, he was on the practice squad for that year. So, yeah, when he did go down, I thought about it. I think he thought about it too, but not knowing where it would go from there. Does Kyle call Matt himself because they have a prior relationship? Nope. Nope. So he doesn't hear from Kyle at all? Nobody at all. Um, who calls? I think it was a personnel guy. I'm not sure exactly who it is. Um, he got a call basically like, late Monday night and they were like 24 hours after 24 hours after to where they were basically like, can you get to Newark airport by not for a nine 30 flight? And I think they called it like seven o'clock and he was like, Whoa, what? All right, hold on. And he threw stuff in a bag and got there. So you have to be ready to try out for an NFL team on 12 hours notice, 12 hours notice, take a flight out there, land at midnight West coast time, which is going to be three in the morning, you know, East coast time and then get up. And have a oh, workout that morning. That night. That night. Yeah. So, so he they got did the, the call Tuesday at seven on Monday night and then went there. Uh oh, he missed and the game. It, he, <laughs> and then went there Tuesday, Tuesday for uh their little private workout with all the quarterbacks they had there. Gotcha. Who, who books the travel? Who pays for it? Right. That's all the the 49ers people. That that scout or personnel guy he talks to, tells them they want him to come to the workout. Here's the deal. And then he from there, most likely goes, you're going to hear from our secretary here in a minute. She's going to call you from this number, answer it, and she's going to want Tell your you, you know, birth, you know, know, birth, your birthday and all that stuff so she can book the flight. So my big question, yeah. the list of quarterbacks that tried out, Kyle Allen, Kellen Clemens, Matt Sims, Tom Savage, TJ Yates, Landry Jones, EJ Manuel. Right. When that group is there, are they all hanging out in the locker room before they go out and chit chatting and they catching are. up? Yeah, yeah, you are. You're all in like this little like uh, you know side locker room for the scrubs, and you're in there getting dressed. And they they're basically like, all right, guys, get dressed. Here's some gear to wear. They give you gear more times than not, right? And you put that on. And they're like, we'll have somebody back out here in like 20 minutes, and we'll bring you out to the field and let you guys get warmed up. And are, are some of them jerks and totally locked in, and they don't want to talk and catch up, uh, or is it casual? You could be that. Most guys in the NFL are secure with them themselves as a human being that they can go, okay, I have to go out here and be the best I can be, and and not worry about yeah. like putting the hex on some other guy that's there. Yeah, are they watching each other's yeah, workouts? Yeah, they're like taking turns from everything I from everything I know, and at least the ones I've been a part of, 
Yeah, you're going. How many throws do you get? Um, it depends. It's going to be dependent on what they want to see or how much they want to see. So it, it can be different at every kind of workout. Uh, but I would imagine they went through all the basics of the route trees, your slants, your hitches, your curls, your in cuts, your comebacks, your go routes, your post routes, deep cross, maybe a tight end route here or there. So we talking 75 throws? I would say probably less than that. I would say like, okay, if they go like, all right, everybody throw a curl route, you might get to throw two or three curl routes and then you're done and the next guy has Damn. to go. Right. So it's going to be like that. It's like yeah. a high school tryout. Yeah, pretty much. And then um, does Kyle watch? Is he there? Yeah, yes, Kyle is there. Uh, and yeah, he watches certainly, especially with quarterback stuff. I mean, because it's the offense. It's it's just the offense, and I think anybody that's in need of a quarterback, the head coach is usually going to be out there for that type of workout. You does know? Kyle talk to any of them? Probably not. He probably lets his guys that run the workout just let them run. Most teams kind of have their formula for what they like to do to have a workout done, and then. As they get towards the end, the guy who runs the workout might look over at Kyle. Go, anything else you want to see? Do you want to, you know, anything else? Yeah. And Kyle might be go, yeah, I want to see, you know, four more play action passes from them or whatever. Do they, um, like, are we talking about like waking up maybe a little bit earlier and getting a workout in before you go? No, no, it's gonna be. Do you think? They're, do you think Matt's like doing push-ups, being like, "All right, let me get a little bit more muscle." Definition. No, biceps out. Yeah. He 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 is where he is at that point, so the the push-ups are not gonna do do it. It's just. Get sleep, get something to eat, uh, and get ready to go. And they might even take you over there to let you eat breakfast at their facility. I mean, that, Do you think Matt was ready? I know Matt was ready, yeah. He's been keeping himself ready? Yeah, he has. I mean, between his, himself not giving up. I mean, he's not giving up. And I've told him, like, I think he should give up. So I'll just tell you that right there. <laughs> I yeah. didn't mean to spit. Well, that's all right. But, yeah, I mean, I, I did. I have said that to him. But he, he is not. And between that and the fact that he coaches all these kids – high school and college he's constantly working he's on constantly throwing, throwing and doing it and demonstrating so he's he's full fledged did they announce anything yet i haven't seen anything they're not going to do anything this week i don't believe okay. i think i think if something happens it'll be next week i can say this i know matt made it to the final cut oh i'm not going to say anybody else <laughs> it was him and two other quarterbacks who went on to have a further evaluation what had, does that mean? had physicals Right. They advance to the fr further stage. To the, to the, to the, they're going to L.A. To the American cough Idol. stage. Can you cough for me? <clears throat> uh, they advance to that stage, yes. Matt been staying clean or even joining you on the back porch? Uh, <laughs> no, he hasn't been on the back porch. He doesn't freaking come to my house. Yeah, he doesn't live there. So I don't know what the hell he does. I'm Actually, I get bitter at him sometimes because I'm like, he drives to see a friend that – lives past my house and doesn't yeah. come to see me well you know what maybe it's good he hasn't been at your house well yeah. for that it certainly because, is yeah. yes now he's good yep all right so hold on is this like you already know what's gonna happen no i have no idea and i'm not even getting into this conversation with kyle like i'm not 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 at all i don't even want to talk to kyle about this or hear it i don't want any kind of cool though but it, hey listen it's always cool when your little brother has a chance to continue to live his dream but um yeah, I'm not getting involved in this. I got, you got to stay away from these things. This is not. Let me guess the two other guys that kept going. I'm gonna say Tom Savage. Woo. I'm gonna say Landry Jones. Woo. Is that the two? I'll never tell. So on the I'll roster, tell you next week. On the roster right well, now, we're all gonna know next week. Well, that's what I'll tell Do you. Do you think <laughs> if Matt Sims gets signed? Yes. We will be the first one to break it, or will we get scooped? Oh, we'll get scooped for Damn. sure. Damn. <laughs> Come on, man. For like, this sure. is our opportunity. I know. It's only my brother and one of my best friends. Yeah, like, trust you me. We news, should have, don't give it to somebody else. We should have this, the market completely cornered. I, yes. I, I know. The quarterback and the team. Own the story, Chris. That's what happens when you're too good of friends with people. More like it's Jay like, Blazer. I mean, it's all, also <laughs> what I fear is if that does happen, it's all going to be, I mean, of course he gave it to yes. Matt Sims. I mean, he's friends with Chris. That's the only reason he's getting it. I mean, that's we weird that your dad would say that. Yeah, we're making him, <laughs> we're making him the third string quarterback because he sucks and he doesn't know anything. But since his last name Sims, we're gonna bring him in. Do you think that <laughs> if when your dad comes on in about thirty minutes, if right, I say so, the doubts. The, what do you think the doubters would say if he got signed? Do you think he would do that same impersonation? Yes. We're gonna, gonna say, We're gonna try. This is what happened to me on Monday night okay. when this all went down. I, I should have told you this from the start. I I come in off the back porch, okay? Yeah, and I didn't want to do the back porch for Monday Night Football, but I did too. I did. I did. I've, I've been pretty strict lately. Yeah, week four, all my rules went out the so window. I, Left the locks were bad. I gave up. <laughs> so I go on the back porch, 
and I, a lot of the times they'll deliberately leave my phone inside. Like I'm home yep. and I need a minute to everybody to back off me. No screens. I don't need Josh going, could you do selfies from your kitchen? <laughs> Feel free to add your thoughts on the game to good, to the good evening text. I do do that. <laughs> yes, you do do that. So I walk in the house and Danielle looks at her phone and goes, your dad and Matt called me. And then I look at my phone and I go, holy cow. I got like 10 missed calls and it's my dad and my Matt, dad and my Matt, dad and Matt. And I'm now, my brain has not gone even close to here. You think I, something's wrong. I'm thinking my mom is on the way to the hospital. That's what I'm really thinking. I'm going, and nobody's texted me anything. Uh. So I'm like, what? So I call and my dad like answers and he's like, hello, there you are. <laughs> oh. And he's like, where you been? We've been trying to call you. And I was like, I was on the back patio. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, all right, all right, okay. Uh, Matt's the 49ers called. <laughs> and I was like, damn. I was like, somebody, you guys couldn't just text me that? I'm over here having a heart attack. Oh, I texted you. I text I said, no, I'm looking at my phone right now. You did not text me. I swear I texted you. I don't know what happened then. He didn't press send on the text. But that's classic Phil. Uh, classic Phil. Oh, yeah. so that's what happened. And that was it. But I just saying I had a heart attack. My big was... takeaway is that when Sim sees something that's a little shocking, his response is, holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> holy cow. cow. Holy cow. Josh is in my head about my cursing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gotta be. He did. Someone's he's, gotta do he's it. He's all over me. He His new thing is to show me through text about what I should not do. You hear that, listeners? Nah, sometimes I tell you what you should do. Oh, yeah, I just need you're to right. show you things on the phone. You do. It yeah. just happens. Yeah, that's okay. C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins, right. and Matt Sims. That's what you're thinking? That's what I'm thinking. That's your one, two, uh, three right there. I, I don't want to go from something that's fun to something that I'm annoyed by, but I, you don't even have to comment on this, Sims. Uh, Ty Dunn, who we've had on this uh, podcast before, writer for Bleach Report, like him a lot, had a, a big article about Blake Bortles, and really the whole thing was just teammates and stuff sticking up for him. And I'm just going to say that a lot of stuff coming from the team is it's unbelievable propaganda. I'm just going to read a few. Okay. Uh, D.D. Westbrook. Tom Brady's great, but he's been playing football for a really, really long time. Who's to say Blake won't be that person when he puts that many years in? So, Me. So here we have a guy saying that Blake Bortles could become Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. um, then Nathaniel Hackett uh, saying, to me, it's beautiful. You're going to adjust. You're going to find a way to win. That's what Blake does. He finds a way to way, uh, to win. We were sixth in offense last year, and Blake touches the ball every time. Um, there was there was something. Keelan Cole had a breakout first year. B Bortles put him on the map. Yeah, Bortles taught him how to reach up there with one hand and catch it. That was that was Bortles that really that really ingrained that into him. Austin Safarian Jenkins says they hate because. They're on the outside and they want to be a part of this. They don't know what's going on on the inside, which is just standard football guy quote because everybody on the outside sucks and everybody in here is great. Yep. Um, growing up, this was interesting. Surprise, Bortles was never a quarterback. From Pop Warner to his freshman year of high school, he played linebacker and mm. running back. Mm. And when he got to high school, they said, play quarterback, and he responded, why not? But to me, the most egregious part was – the Jags were so confident in Bortles last year, they decided to take a knee with the lead at the end of the first half of the AFC title game. I have been Wait, around. I don't understand that one. I have been around a lot of left co PR. Right. I have been around a lot of spinning one thing to be something else. But taking the knee because you're that confident in Bortles when you're two passes away from field goal range doesn't make any sense. Yeah. In fact, I would say it's a bold-faced <laughs> lie. All of the compliments in this article were defensive guys going, I mean, he's willing to get hit. There's not a lot of quarterbacks that are willing to get hit because when I'm judging quarterbacks, I want quarterbacks that are good at taking sacks. That's what I look for in a quarterback. It's egregious. I get it. What are they supposed to say? What is Nathaniel Hackett supposed to say? These players, I get it. But this propaganda is overwhelming to me. It's, we're going to look at this. I thought about this in bed last night. If our tagline is the podcast that says Rogers is good and Bortles is bad, that's easy. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. 
I want to be on the right side of history. I just worry about the people that read these articles and they believe that shit. I, I, you know, I don't know what to say about the subject anymore. You know, I, I think the thing that bothers me is people think I'm a hater, right? And I just, I, I don't look at that. That's not being a hater. Do people not understand the definition of a hater? A hater is being like, Tom Brady's not even good. Matt Ryan's not even good. LeBron's not even the top five players in the NBA. Like, that's being a hater. I know people might not like that I have Tom Brady as the third best quarterback of all time, or I say Drew Brees isn't top five, but I don't feel like I'm being a hater there. I'm just trying to give it a realistic evaluation, and that's the same thing that goes in with Bortles. I know Bortles is a good dude, and I do struggle with that at times, but yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to say about some of that. They're going to continue to support that. That's what I respect I, about I, the yes, Jags. I get it. Because Doug Marone and, and Tom Coughlin, it shows they how do much it the of right a team way. They, they are. are a and team. look, Bortles is a good guy, and I think that he's finally – like, look, we're able to self-scout and talk really positively about Jared Goff and go, wow, you know what? He's proving me wrong right yeah, now. Yeah, he is. Bortles – is extremely tough his running is absolutely a weapon never have we seen him hit deep fades and shallow crossers with this kind of accuracy yep. letting receiver leading receivers uh with this offense he's actually executing it pretty well mm -hmm. and that's where i'm going to end it i'm not going to do the butts yeah that's what he's been doing this year yeah just just compare him though to all this other stuff though is nuts yeah. to say that he could become tom brady Okay. Yeah, that's enough. Um, let's jump into your film. And yeah. then we're going to do 20 minutes, and then we're going to have Phil join us. Uh, you didn't have notes on this, but boy, did you have a big sentence. I came out and said I thought Cam Newton was a top five performer at the quarterback position this year. And you said, you know, I watched the Panthers-Bengals game, and the thing that jumped out is Norv Turner's running game. Yeah. What are you seeing happen in Carolina right now? Well, first thing is, I, I don't want you to think you're wrong about your Cam Newton thing. I don't think yeah, I'm wrong. I, yeah, good. Because <laughs> he's, he's special, and as long as number one's on the field, you have a chance to win. And the numbers can't quantify his value to the football team. They can't. Because the things you have to do on the defensive side of the ball, you you just the, the stats don't always bear out to what he does. But the big thing is the thing that I like before you get into right, this running game. Yeah. The thing that I like about Cam, yeah. I'm not seeing the seven hitches. No, I know, I know. When I watch Panthers football, there was nothing worse than him at the end of his drop. Pat, look, Pat, look, Pat, look, sack. Right now, it's drop back, look, turn, fire. Yeah, and it's. It is. It's changed their offense. It keeps them in good positions. It doesn't... Uh, it's a combination of him, and it's a combination of Norv Turner not calling all 20-yard routes. Right. Or he's gotten in his brain, too, when he does call the 20-yard routes, like, live you to play another day. You have Christian McCaffrey right. wide open. Check he's it down. Special. Keep us in second and seven. So talk to me about so, the run game, because you used to always talk about Mike Shula having a super complex run scheme. Right. What's Norv doing? Yeah, Norv's is an old school complex run scheme. Okay, so where Shula, I always liked it because it was a little bit, of, it gave them an edge as far as like, I want to call it what I call like college run game stuff. The speed sweeps and, you know, Cam gets out on the on the edge and runs the option with somebody, things like that. Um, all that's still there with Norv, but he's brought like 1992 Dallas Cowboys with him too. And they're pulling guards and trapping three techniques in the middle of the field and doing things like that where McCaffrey, first of all, is a phenomenal, what I would say, setup guy for his blockers. He understands how to get people in the way of his blockers and then make cuts off them. This is what he did at Stanford. And so he's now getting to run in a scheme that he ran in Stanford, Stanford, where last year I would say he was doing inside, outside zone more. Now he's going, oh, this is like the old days with David Shaw. I'm coming downhill. There's a guard in front of me. And if he kicks him out, I'm going in. If he craps him in, I'm going out. All of the clips from Christian McCaffrey's draft tapes that yeah. we would watch yeah. would be him kind of going behind a guard, right. jumping, finding a lane, and then boom, he's gone. Yes. Do you think Norv did that for Christian McCaffrey, or that's just Norv's offense and it happens to fit well? I think it's I think Nor it's Norv's offense, and I think when Norv probably got the job, he mo like what most guys in Norv's position do, they go back and watch some of the players. And I was with Christian McCaffrey only having one year in the NFL. I bet you he went back to the college days and was like, damn, 
when he runs behind a fullback and a pulling guard, I mean, he makes the right cut and the right read every single time. Can you explain to people what an inside-outside zone is? So that's yeah. what they were doing last year. They're not doing as right. much now. Outside zone is just like, okay, uh, the easiest way to explain it is your five. Let's go outside zone. Your five linemen are basically all going to move to the right and try to get outside leverage on the blockers, right? So they're going to beat the defenders to the side that to they're trying the to get side, to, to kind the of side. holding them back to right. the middle. And now push them towards the middle of the field. Toward, push, push them that way. And if they can't actually what we would call reach block, where they can cut them off to the outside of the part of the Take ball. Take their legs out? No. They'll continue to push them. If they're going, oh, I can't get them, they'll push them towards the sidelines. And, and that's when you see cutback lanes. And then it's on the running back to find the holes. Exactly right. Like, oh, damn, that defense end didn't close his gap because the defensive tackle on that side, mm. he ran so far to the left side. He took himself out that of the play. Now the tackle's way out, and that gap that we talk about is like 10 feet big. So how and does, how can you expect anybody to fill that hole? When you say McCaffrey sets up defenders to run into blockers, right. give me an example. Right, so he, you know, traditional, like let's say downhill run game. He's eye formation behind Cam Newton. He takes two little jabs to the right, to the right, like he might go to the right side. But in doing that, the backers are watching him and following him. Well, at the same time as he's going to the right, the right guard is pulling to the left. And getting set so up. So now he's getting set up to come around and either trap those linebackers who got stuck inside, or let's say they do get there, he's going to kick them out. But he's very good at going, okay, I got it. Let me kind of – I'm not going to beat my guard to the hole. So he who are can't, running backs that do that? That that do that, that have that type of patience like no, that? No, no, no. Oh. Who are the running backs that hit the hole too fast? Oh, Gosh, there, there's a few sometimes where I look at it. Let me just pull up some names, and I'll give you some better ones. Both the teams, both the teams. Damn, I just want to say while you're doing that, yeah. it is funny because there's happening? no coach that we roasted this offseason more than North Turner and the amount of family members that he's brought in there. Yes. I, more than you, was even more vocal because he quit on Zimmer. And I will say that – what he's got blossoming right now in Carolina without Greg Olson right. is very, very interesting. Right. They're, they're taking on super athletic teams. Now, I think it's pretty fair that Atlanta's defense was decimated, but the Bengals were really good, and they're finding ways to get McCaffrey and Funchess the ball in important situations. They are. Um, hmm. Let me think of just – Look, the true thing is running backs that don't set up their blockers probably aren't in the league that no, long. That, I was going to say, like, your good ones understand that. Not all of them are great as far as running behind other blockers. Like, I I could say at times like there was times where Adrian Peterson wasn't like that. Like where I would he just go I would just go no let him run outside zone and let him figure it out and he'll make something happen with his unbelievable ability. Yeah, I'm choking on the spot right here for it's my. It's a point. hard question to say who are the bad. But running either backs. way, either way, the point is is that he is so good. I don't think at Tevin doing Coleman's that. that great at setting no, up. No, he would. There's a there's a perfect guy because he's a zone runner. Yes, he is he's made trying to, to get to that edge as fast exactly, as possible. Exactly, or I'm going to go sixty percent. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, no, but this year's that's a good one. He. I'm going to run 60%, and now I see a hole, and I'm just going to hit it and fly through it and actually go through the hole at a speed that you weren't ready for and you thought you were going to get me, and yes. I went through it. Tevin Coleman right. hitting the edge is one of the scariest things yes. when you're playing against them. He was Devontae the perfect Freeman example. sets him up. He will set him up, right? He's got a little more of that balance to where yeah. he's going to make you go, oh, I'm committing here, and he's going, great, commit there. That's where I yes. wanted you to. I've never advance. seen, actually, Tevin Coleman stop. You're right. I don't think I have. I've never seen Tevin Coleman go and then go. It's always like, I'm going to beat you to the edge. Catch me. Just fly. Just fly. Uh, So, yeah, he is. But that that run game and then what they're doing off of it, even though they don't have great weapons in the pass game, like we talked about with like a McVeigh, he always has a package of plays off these run plays that you look at and go, they're gashing him with this run play. And now he's got five different play actions with the same thing of the guard yes. polling and the linebackers are going, damn, I don't know if it's the run or the play action pass. And that's the beauty of Norb right now. Because you don't have notes. Yeah. You leave the game Cincinnati, Carolina feeling what way about the Bengals? Man, the Bengals, I, I think I'm disappointed in their defense to a degree. Their front seven, especially to be pushed around like that is a little like, I'm like, what? And then really not to get a whole lot of pressure on cam throughout the day. I think that's what concerns me. Yeah, how do you decide when you're watching film if the Panthers O-line played well or the Bengals front seven played bad? Yeah, I, the that they would be, let's say, if they were in some 
defensive formations on sets where they weren't trying to do anything crazy, no blitz or stunt. Just straight Sometimes up. Sometimes you get unlucky, right? And you go, I want the whole defensive line to slant to the left. And they run left. And they right. run a le- or they run left and smash everybody down there. And all of a sudden yeah. you go, damn, we got nobody outside. Like, no, there was too many plays where I go, they're set up and they're not doing anything special. And you got this gap and you got this gap. And they got blown out the of the Panthers way. The Panthers' offensive line yeah. is one of the big mysteries. It is. Because I thought they were going to be trash. And, and, and pass protection, I'm still not sold on it. But if he can continue to slow people down mm. with this run game, and then Cam is running as good as I've ever seen him run, then that's where they can be, they can be special. Patriots offense, Lions defense. Okay, yeah. Boy, did we think the Patriots were just going to dice them up. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a lot of fantasy players. I was excited to see what was going to happen. But instead, Patricia was the one that had the advantage, not McDaniels. You wrote, Patricia definitely won the battle with Josh. Combo coverage, dropping people in the right area, didn't need to blitz. Didn't need to blitz. So you're going to give round one to Patricia for sure. This wasn't just players. No. He actually knew what McDaniels wanted to do. He was all over it. And I think the first thing is the two guys he's got in the middle right now with Sean and Deshaun Hand in the middle, the Alabama, Alabama duo, guy. right? Shockers. They, those two, I and think. He got Hand like the fourth round. I, they, I know because he had the, the leg injury uh, right. in college. But he was really a top 40 pick. And I think they have gotten a feel for Patricia's defense and how he wants things done, not being able to be as aggressive upfield. They got to go back to Nick Saban school and go, no, read it, stand there, be a man, hold these guys up. So they are allowing them not to blitz. And then they're pushing the pocket, which is what New England likes to do to everybody else. Jared Davis is amazing on the back end, but they took no chances. They were very smart. They basically said, let me see you run the ball, Patriots, like we've talked about. Let me see if you'll stay patient with it. Oh, you wanted to get into this power running set where it looks like you're going to run the ball well new england like the saints i would always go if they get in those sets play the pass they're they're looking to gash you with the play action pass when you do that kind of stuff and that's where patricia was all over it too oh you want to do your fake fake you know come out of the play action fake gronk over the middle or receiver runs that slant that they're so famous for no they never took the cheese on that the whole night when someone figures out the patriots like this yeah. And it was a former coach. Right. Big old bleacher report buzzword. Did the Lions provide the blueprint for how to slow down the current Patriots offense? I don't think so. Because I just think that you got two highly intelligent individuals in New England who will find they're going to go, damn, all right, so they played us like this because we might have had these tells and we do this a lot. They're going to come up with something else this week to go, this is going to correct that so people can't overcover this play and we're going to find other ways to cheat and get yards or whatever it may be. So do they make a game plan fully expecting the next opponent to try to do what the lions did to them? And then you try and get them thinking that they're like copying the Lions. They're going to make a game plan based on, of course their history with this defensive coach and what he does against them. And so then this will be, the this Dolphins. is going to be the Dolphins, right? So they're going to look at things that go, damn, this is what they did to us last year. Okay. We have to change that up. So that's one category. That's one category. And then they're also going to look at going, man, what have teams been stopping on us the last few weeks and what are they doing? It's like a self scout. Basically, what are they doing to take away some of our staples? So then when Brady gets to the line and let's say he sees we're out there with two running backs, one tight end, one running back, two tight yeah. ends. And we're seeing the same lions coverage. Yeah. They've been working on week on a way to co- attack a different it. play, different formation set. That's going to, have you ever been in an organization that goes, this is what we do and people are stopping it, but we just got to run it harder. Uh, yeah. I mean, Gruden was a little like that at times. I can't say I know I can't I have some hope for them but I'm just not sure yet that's kind of my thing with them I I really think you know how we just talked about the defense getting used to Patricia I still think the offense is getting used to this like wait we've just been like give the ball to Matt Stafford and we sling it around the field what are you talking about managing situations what are you talking about first and second down run plays like I really think that's part of Matt Matt Stafford's struggles right now I know it's this is total gut and this is just me reading tea leaves and been around the NFL my whole life but I think right now he's almost in a little bit of like I've never been micromanaged like this before I'm actually second guessing throwing rifles you know 40 yards down the field because my coach keeps telling me Tom never turns it over it's those things that I think are getting into Matt Stafford's head he played smart the other night he made some big throws 
And carry on Johnson is good. Like you saw, I mean, he can make the second level guys miss a lot. He's very quick on his feet. He's got a Le'Veon Bell ish type of run to him. Um, I was going to say there is a huge push in the online community to give all of the carries to carry on Johnson. Yeah. Uh, especially when I realize that Sean Lee is going to be out uh -huh. and we know how different Dallas's defense is when Sean Lee's there or not. Right. Carry on Johnson could be the guy, but his success rate of running the ball compared to the other running backs on yeah, that roster, right. it's not even close. No, it's not. He also looks like a totally different guy. He's he was a baller. He was another guy that I just when go. You're the leading rusher in the exactly. SEC. Remember we were saying I'm this? willing to bet on you. Right. Remember we were saying this during the draft. Like he was. I, I'm not saying he was Sony Michelle or or, or Penny. Uh, but I thought he was every bit as good as Geis. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little low on Geis compared to the rest of the world. But I think your point about what you're saying is, if you're the SEC Player of the Year, then damn, you're good. I don't know what else to say. It's the best conference in college football, and it's not even close. This comes from the Twitter account, at Late Round QB. Among the 43 running backs who have 20 or more carries this year, Carrion Johnson is third in success rate. Led Garrett Blunt is 39th. Yeah. So he's 39th of 43, and, like, and Carryon Johnson is third. Yeah. And that's measuring, you know, what was available, what did you get out of right. what was available. Carryon's been one of the best. It's time to feed Carryon. It is. Uh, so that was a good tweet by them. Uh, Dolphins Raiders. Let's get to the YouTube comments and what they wanted. Uh, you wrote, Dolphins are tough. They play smart. Gase always keeps the big picture in mind. And then I need an explanation about this. Yeah. You wrote, he doesn't let the players fuck it up. Right. I don't know what that means. He doesn't like, it's third and 17, and I'm going to dial up an aggressive play and trust Ryan Tannehill will not throw it into a window that's really close and ruin the whole damn game for us on that play. He just goes, nah, I'll find some cheap way to throw the ball three yards. Maybe we can break a tackle and get the first down. If not, we're going to punt it, and we're going to make you execute and come down on us. He's not going to let the game be ruined by one play call in a tough situation, which is smart. He that's just what I respect about him. That he it knows seems like him and Tannehill are they both really understand. I think so. What they need to do and how Tannehill's going to manage the game. I think so. Would you call Ryan Tannehill a game manager? I think he's a step above a game manager. You know, I, I do because I think he can. A game manager is a guy that takes what his offensive coach has given him. And keeps you out of bad situations and never takes any chances or anything like that. Ryan Tannehill is a game manager, but he can do things outside the normal realm of the playbook at times, whether that's scramble for 30 yards up the sidelines and then his deep ball throwing. You wrote, yeah. say what you want. Tannehill's deep ball is as good as anyone in the NFL. It is on the screws every time. I mean, if not every time, it's 9 out of 10. You know, and they take a few shots every game. They got the weapons. And they do got the weapons. And if you even think about it, I mean, it's it's every week. You know, the Jets game, they didn't have to. They got to get, play somewhat conservative. I think he had one big pass play in that game. But you think about the Titans game, right? They were down, bombed down the middle. Malcolm Butler was on Kenny Stills. He just threw it perfectly. This game here, I mean, bombs the Kenny Stills and, you know, the Akeem Grants and all that. That's where I'm impressed. So they, they go, we're going to run the ball. We're going to have, you know, some high percentage completion type of pass calls. And when I get a feel for them in the second quarter, because I feel like that's about when it comes every time, he starts to dial up a play here and there to go watch blah, blah, blah on this route. Jakeem Grant. Yeah. 4-3-8. Right. Kenny Stills. 4-3-8. Woo. Albert Wilson. 4-4-3. Four, four, Kenyon Drake. 4-4-5. Four, four, Devontae Parker, 445. Mike Gasecki, 454. Damn. Danny Amendola, 458. Woo! Name a fat other than the Chiefs. Maybe the Chiefs. They might be faster than the Chiefs. Jakeem Grant has a level of speed that is Tyree Kill. Yeah, it's not Tyree Kill. Nobody's that, but it's it's ish. Tyree it's Kill ish. 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 ish okay? But it's it's if he has a lane, yes. goodbye. Yeah, exactly right. But think about those speeds. I know. And and then think about 480. Right. Jarvis Landry. There okay. Right. How could you let this guy go? What offense did Adam Gase run in Denver with Peyton Manning? 
Wes Welker. Yeah. Super slot, super quick, right. quick decisions. Right. Get the ball in their hands and then let them go. Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. Demarius is even that kind he of guy. He has too. built a team on speed. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill can run too. Yeah. That's the name of the game, especially when you're chasing fast people in Miami right. and it's hot. Right. I know. I'm just saying that we just watched a Patriots defense look too slow against Detroit. I saw a stat from my guy, Nick Wright. Yeah. Do you know what the Patriots record, Tom Brady's record is at home against the AFC East in in 28 games? In 28 games at home, AFC East. Holy crap. It's going to be like, I'm going to say 24 and 4. 27 and 1. Are you kidding me? The Dolphins are the only one that the I think Wildcat game with Ronnie Brown's the only home game he's lost to an 27 a- and 1. Oh, you know right. Yeah, cuz he lost the Jets, but it was a it was a playoff game, right, at home. So, yeah, okay. That's unreal. That's 27 unreal. and 1. Right. The Dolphins really have a team. Yeah. It's a great matchup for them. It is. Side to side mm-hmm. speed, which is what the Dolphins do against a really slow Patriots team. To me, we're going to learn so much about the Patriots yes, this week. We are. I am expecting them to look slow. I am expecting this to have to be a Tom Brady figures it out on offense and wins in a shootout. Right. But if they're able to somehow slow down the speed, I'll be shocked. But I then know. we'll go, here's how they're going to do it the rest of the year. Right. You could. Uh, that's what I always worry about in New England. Like, Yeah, New England's going to be the lesser physically gifted team on the field. You're 100%. In most games this in year. In most games. You're but exactly definitely right. Definitely this game. Definitely this game. And, I, yeah, I the thing I think will be fun to see is, like, if they just go total – if he just feels like I know Gase's offense and we're going to take some chances for the first time in a while and mm. not play this bend, don't break. Like, we're going to actually take some crap away. I wonder if they'll get to that point to where he feels like he has to start doing that. I, that that'll be a big thing I'll be watching for. You wrote, I was wrong about Mike Kosicki. Yes, I was wrong about Mike Kosicki. What do you mean? Well, I just thought he was soft as baby shit over in Penn State. No, Gasecki blocks a little better than I gave him credit for. And I do think this goes back to Gase. Again, this is what coaching is, too. You know, if you if you know the guy a little bit and you feel like, I know he's got it in him. I can bring it at him. I've been him in the meetings of the combine and we worked out all those kind of things. But, yeah, between that and then he's caught the ball a few times and, like, lowered his shoulder, and I've been like, damn, okay, he ain't slowing down. He's going to go make this guy really hit him. And so He's a tough dude, man. He is a tough dude. He is. And then last thing before we call your dad, yeah. I actually am glad we're calling him a few minutes late. He's going to be pissed. How much longer will the Raiders trust Amari Cooper? Yeah. What does know. that mean? It means that drop balls. It means stop running on a post route when your quarterback throws the ball. If the first interception, when the game is, you're they're already up like they're, they're already nothing. up. They're controlling the football game, and you're Jordy going to watch Nelson out. Has like 170 receiving yards. Exactly in the first right. Half. And he throws balls like that. Then he drops a ball later on. Drops a slant. Um, had a something else where I want to say like he had a missed assignment, but. I felt like as the game went on, he finally was just like, ah, Martavis is over here. I'll look at Martavis. Mm. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm t- and I know Gruden. Gruden is the kind of guy that is going to get annoyed by these mistakes and these things like this to where also Amari Cooper's attitude and the way he is as a person is not going to lend him to people giving him the benefit of the doubt. We know it. We've seen it. We've been around him. He's not exactly the most charismatic, warm-feeling guy in the world. And coaches feel that crap, too. And if they think you're like this cold, weird dude, and then you're not catching the ball and performing, then you do become this cold, weird dude. If you're the guy that's the cold, weird dude that balls every day, he's a little weird, but he he handles his business. (laughs) You're the cold, weird dude who's not doing shit. They're just going, he's weird. He's strange. I don't know what to say. I, uh, I think we have a case of the invasion of the body snatchers. Is there a coincidence that all of a sudden Calvin Ridley is putting together 180 yard receiving games and three touchdowns Seriously. from Alabama? I think Saban takes the souls out of former players and then puts them into future players to just continue to recycle. It was never Amari Cooper, it was the Alabama Soul Snatcher. Okay, you guys didn't like that. Let's I give did. Phil Sims a call. I did like it. I mean, when have we seen Cal- Calvin Ridley? Is so funny to me. Yeah. I've heard you. I heard you talking about it, but it's like here we have a a, col- a college receiver that's so talented, and he never got to catch the ball because his quarterback yeah. sucked. That was the hard one of the hardest evaluations of the year. Was and just he, going. He already looks better than Mom. Damn. Like. He. Oh well, yeah. He is. Yeah. 
Because see, he was mad that I called him a middle two. Yeah, right. Now, now Mohamed Sanu is a middle three. I mean, damn, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be that way. Matty Ice, though, bald last week. Yes. I need to watch the film more, but he is he is getting to that where I go. If you're going to be paid like Aaron Rodgers, you have to make some plays like Aaron Rodgers. He had some plays in the red zone and some throws in that game where I was just like, wow, whoa, okay. And he's moving. I know. He's doing a little bit of what we said last year, which I liked. Is this? Yes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Big Phil. Big Phil. It's Big Phil coming on five minutes late. Yeah. Only four. 449. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, we weren't that late. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Let's see if he answers. He's protesting. Who's bothering me? Us. Yep. I was in a great football conversation with somebody on the phone, get lots of good information, news, you know, just to help me. But you know, now i got to talk to you, too. That's all right. I don't want to say anything bad. I, I think I – what did I call you when I got off the show last week? I think I, I called you all something I shouldn't have done. So well, I well, that's all right. You said uh, – You said the B I, word. You said, uh, yeah, that's it, bitches, or something. I'm oh, out of here. what I said? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. okay, Dad. Don't worry. You, you right. like the graphic, though. I sent him the graphic. Yeah, some yeah, fan that made great. that. That was right. great. That so, really was. So it's okay. It's all right. I mean, you're allowed to say the words like that. It's, it's not too crazy of a place. And in the NFL locker room, unfortunately, that is a word. Okay. Yes. I, trust me. I don't feel proud to say it. I have a little girl. I have a little boy. And yeah. it is a word that even my wife doesn't What's want my kids saying. What's the most popular curse word in an NFL locker room? F word. Yeah. F word. Or, or I would say bitch is next. Really? It, it, it's well, you know, I grew up in a different era than Christopher and you did, Adam. And I, the, the, here's one of my favorite stories of all time. I think it was 1988. Wellington Mara, the owner of the Giants, who went to church every single day of his life. You know, probably every the age day. Of three. Every day. He ne- he always went to church every day. Wow. And he That's never exhausting. said much about the team. Didn't give interviews. 88 training camps coming to an end. They go, "What do you think, Mr. Mara?" And I remember the article reading. And he goes. Man, our coaches are tough on the players. Our players are practicing hard. I love their discipline. I love everything about it. And this and that. He goes, but I do wish our coaches could curse just a little less. <laughs> because, you know, they were, it was every curse word you could think of started every sentence. You know, it, it was, nobody thought anything about it, but that's the way it was back then. The coaches just cursed endlessly. And, you know, I think there's a lot of staffs now that I'm sure there's no cursing, and which is kind of hard to do in football, but I know they do it. It's impossible. I mean, it, Tony Dungy, I'm sure, wasn't. I mean, I'm out ki- coaching uh, with my, you know, eighth-grade kid throwing a football game. You, hey, hey, oh, oh, okay, I'll be careful. <laughs> All right, now, one more time, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so, Phil, take me got? take me through Monday night. You find out Matty Boy is getting a workout. What's it like as a dad? Well, Not even know, Phil really Sims, just him. a dad. As a dad, I just was really happy. And, you know, he came in. I was working and sitting in my office. He comes, hey, I'm going to work out for the 49ers. I said, oh, are you kidding? Dang, well, good for you and this and that and all that. <laughs> for you. And I said, now, Christopher, you understand this and that. I'm, I think I go, you, you, you want to go out and throw the driveway real quick? <laughs> 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 I swear. He's such a psycho. Help you? He goes, I want to make sure you're, you know, you, your technique or this. He goes, I'm good. Don't worry. I'm good. I don't need it. I mean, I threw, I actually, I actually threw today. Oh, okay. Okay, good. All right. You know, so that was the, that's my first reaction. You want to go throw a few? Uh, that's, so it was that's, good. And it went well. It went really well. I'm sure he threw the ball very well. I don't even worry about that part because I've thrown with my son a hundred times over the last three years. And I don't remember having one day going, wow, man, that was not a good day. That's mm. he's. So yeah, he's a machine. So he's a machine throwing it. So that's yeah. What what that gets him? Well, it, it probably got him out. a tryout, but that's it. So it's all good stuff. Uh, if there's anybody out there that's going to be like, of course, Matt got this. Uh, he he, he kind of knows Kyle and Chris is his friend. What would you tell them? Well, go watch him, see it. Go look at some of his preseason tape and tell him the you know. I'll be kind. Just tell him uh, <laughs> how's that answer your question. <laughs> Mr. Don't Know Nothing, make an opinion. But, you know, you can make a lot of money on TV not knowing anything and giving an opinion. Right? Yes, you can. I see him next to you every Sunday. 
<laughs> yeah. Don't say anything, Phil. Uh, it's great. But, you know, hey, hey it's, it's just my opinion. That's it. Oh, well, okay. Let's don't put any facts into it. That's my, like I always tell you, that's my new show. I'm going to listen to all the shows and just go, okay, that was a lie. That's just total, absolute bull. And this is an answer where, I, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to act like I know what I'm talking about. And we're going to say it really loud and scream at you. There you go. <laughs> Phil, that, that when covers a lot of people, even you two. Yeah, yeah. It does. <laughs> Phil, when was the first time that you went on a football field and went, "Damn, that guy has a stronger arm than me"? Huh. Sims, your son Chris said it was Charles Mock. No, I told him the first time I ever was worried about anybody ever throwing harder than me, especially before my swing, was Chance Mock, Mock right? Yeah, yeah. Chance, Chance threw it very hard. And I mean, like, really hard. But the problem with his, it, it it's a football term, but the ball was really heavy. It I was mean, heavy, it, right. Oh, my gosh. It, it was like just, a brick. You couldn't catch it. It right. was so heavy. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers, I saw uh, James Jones on TV today, and they were talking about he played with Brett Favre. Or I think he caught Brett at the end of his career. He did. Right. And, and somebody asked him who had a stronger arm, Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. He goes, oh, Aaron. And he goes, well, how can you say it so quick? Maybe, and he goes, no, I asked players that had been around with, Aaron, you know, with, um, with uh, Brett Favre years before, and they said, no question, Aaron's got a stronger arm. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think there's, it's a question now. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is, you know, it's, it's, it's still awesome. I mean, he's hopping around on one leg, throwing it off balance, falling down 40 yards on it with a perfect spiral. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it he, is. He actually did move around, I think, better against Washington that would give me hope that he's going to get better just so we can see him and just see what the Green Bay Packers really are. Well, well uh, I, I don't even know if I – like when your NFL moment, what was the first guy you were on the field with in pregame or anything like that where you were just like, damn. I, yeah, mean, I better throw a little bit holy more. Holy cow, he can throw it. You know, we all look at the guy across the way when he's warming up just to go, let me see how it comes out of his hand, what it is. Oh, it, yeah, that's right. I was going to say on my team, I really don't know if I ever played with anybody on the Giants that had right. a better arm than me. I don't I, think you did. No, yeah. I don't. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I think – you know, it's a good feeling to go out there and go, okay, I'm going to throw it better than all of you again today, so deal with it. And right. Here we go. Um, I was playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers my rookie year, and I was watching Doug Williams warm up on the uh, other end, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> How did he last to whatever pick he was in the draft? I know and, why, Phil. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> yes, he's Doug Williams, and that's right. He played at Grambling, and we got it. I know. And it's it's a disgrace. How about the throw that explains him Right in Tampa? I think it was raining. He dropped back, slipped and fell, and literally was sitting on his rear end, yes. sitting there, and threw an out cut to the left for a touchdown. He did, yes. Yes. I mean, that was like, I just went, that is unbelievable. Yeah, but I Doug know. But Williams, Oof. unfortunately for him, you know, his body beat him up, uh, his back, uh, you know, he kind of had those knees that were a problem and everything, and uh, pro- you know, probably just didn't get his get out of his career what he really could have if he'd have been a little more fortunate. Yeah, damn. He, did, he still did pretty well. He won a Super Bowl, and man, was he on a roll once he got in there. Holy and cow! And I know this: if I'd have been a quarterback with the Washington Redskins, and he was out there throwing against me every day, I'd be going, "Oh my God, <laughs> we better win, not better play well," because. You got to watch it every day, and that's really when they finally just said, "Let's make the switch." So right. Akib Talib is on IR. Okay, so he's going to be out for eight weeks. Eight weeks. Okay. Oh man, I thought it might wow. be one of those surgeries where he'd be four to six weeks. That's what so. I thought it was too. Yeah. Okay. Well, it'd be interesting to see. I don't know if it will. That's what I said. Their team greatly. I right. really don't. Yeah, yeah that's They're, what Chris said too. Yeah, and and. It, you know, I watched them against who were they playing the week before? I can't remember. Uh, the they Cardinals. Killed, yeah. Well, I'm watching them. I'm going, oh, my God, they got no starters in here. They're all the backups. For it. it was like a preseason game. And then I started to start watching some of the backups going, man, they're good, too. I know. So, that, Wade Phillips, smart coach, great coach, all that stuff. And um, I don't think it's going to be as a big a factor as we think it is at this time. So, Phil, your son is, like most people in the media, completely fed up with the body weight issue with quarterbacks getting hit. Um I, I feel like if you had that rule back in the day, boy, you would have been called a lot. Oh, 
Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not even that. I laughed. You could throw the ball, and the receiver could catch it and start to turn up field and start running, and then you'd still get blasted from behind. And, right. and you know, nothing would be called. You know, I so, didn't, I so hold on, Phil. Hold on, but Phil. Going, Phil, before you get into this, here's my dilemma. This okay. is the common way in which it's discussed. People go, huh, if this was back in the day, they'd be able to get away with anything. And it's always this discussion. Is there a part of you as a former quarterback that had to get destroyed and nothing was called? Do you look at the game and you go, you know what, this is smarter because, man, I, maybe I should have been protected more? Or do you look at it and go, they need to go through what I went through? Like, No. No, I don't. I understand it's different. There's a lot of Reggie Whites out there now and mm. Charles Haley's and mm. Lawrence Taylor's. I mean, maybe not to that great degree, but there's so much speed. And, you know, I've had this conversation with quarterbacks in the league and having a beer sitting around four or five, and, you know, I hear them go, man, come on, you know, let's don't kid ourselves. It's life and death back there. I mean, you know, you've got to get rid of that ball as fast as you can. And this, so, and even – like Gene Steratore, you know, he, he said it to, to to me. I asked him, he goes, Phil, when you stand there as an official and you just see him coming and hitting quarterback, you just go, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're down there in the field and everything, and Mike Carey, when he was working with me, he goes, you've been off the field too long. It's changed. These are different guys rushing the passer now. So uh, I think they, they they're going overboard with the rule. No question. When it's blatant, call it and that. But I, I think they – I just feel this way, and I listened to you this morning too, Christopher. Yeah. I think they'll slowly kind of – they don't need to change the rule. Just be a little more careful when you call it. Right. And and make it, you know, like you said, you said egregious, but when it's just you know it. Yes. And the Clay Matthews hit is not one I'd go, oh, I know it. And that, no, that was not. He was to the side a little bit. It wasn't driving him in the ground like they, you know, it just, it was, it, that was a bad call, in my opinion. And I hope they do, and I think they will start being a little more judicious with these calls and these hits on the quarterbacks. I How was about Ben Roethlisberger. Yes, you touched the helmet. That is automatic, and it always will be. But I love the fact that he just did the old, you know, Soccer well, this, flop this, or whatever. And this is and what they're going to admit it to today. He goes, yeah, but I kind of flopped a little. Yeah. But, you know, it, this it, is what's going to happen if they're going to call it like this. It's going to be a new thing, too. That's going to be another unintended consequence. I mean, wh why not try to get it if you can, then? Oh, well, I was yeah, going to say that if I start coming out and practice and have a special session on how to flop. Yes, you know, 100%. I, I, yeah. would, I would say, oh, it's third and 15. Ben, here's what you're going to do. You're going <laughs> to hold the ball as long as possible. And as soon as someone's coming, you're just going to throw it. And then you should just lean into it, which, of course. But what you, what Phil mentioned is interesting is 1990, I think the average weight of a defensive lineman may have been like in the 270s. Yeah, right. So the actual weight of the defensive lineman since that day has gone up. Sure. So it being a body weight issue, there's a lot well, more you know, weight you know, now. You know, you know what? No. It, it, that is <laughs> something. But really, the big thing is is the speed. Yeah. When they hit oh. you fast, you go down faster. So These back then they faster. were still big. They just weren't running four six forties. Now it's everyone's a Lawrence Taylor speed with a Reggie White body. I mean, it, it, it's incredible. I watch guys every week. I just go, wow, I didn't know that guy was that good. You know, I mean, it, I do it constantly. Yeah. And, it, and I'm probably. I do it, it, it every week. I just go, gosh, look at the speed of some of these guys, and it's, and it's what we're seeing. And just to give you an example. And Matt, Christopher and I talk about this stuff, you know, Adam, all the time. Just the Patriots, they revolutionized or changed football with the short passing game. They right. did. They changed it. Right. Everybody started to copy. But what's happened? It's Now we got to get away from that. Why? Seattle defense, that scheme, people with the line. get away from the short passing? Because, because the linebackers are fast, so fast as hell. They let right. you catch it and they run you over. Right. Yeah, so the, the yards after the catch, I mean, they're just not what they used to be like that with these little short crossers. Right. Look at, And I don't even consider Detroit a fast team on defense. And New England was throwing a lot of short passes, and, man, bam, every, every throw was bam, right to the ground. Right. Or, and, you know, then they, were, they get there so quick, Tom Brady actually missed some short throws because the closing speed of linebackers and safeties 
has just gotten, of course, it's faster and faster. Well, this is the last thing, and we'll let you go, just because we're on this subject, and I think it's like, uh, you know, I try to explain to people, like, if you're going to make the rules like this, then why would you ever draft a good defensive pass rusher ever again? What, 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 there's no point in having the 85 Bears defense or the 2013 Seahawks or the Broncos in 2015. You know, like, I've tried to explain to people playing quarterback in – the defense's advantage on the quarterback is to make him feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable in the pocket, uncomfortable pre-snap, uncomfortable right. that, damn, Richard Dent is definitely coming while I'm looking down the field. I better throw this thing or I'm going to take a sack and he's going to kill me. And that's part of what the defenses have. And I just think people are missing that that part of the conversation. Well, yes, there, there's no doubt about that. And, you, you know, there's a couple things. One, pressure on the quarterback is almost – and I think sometimes better than sacking the quarterback because when there's pressure on the quarterback, that's when you don't see as clearly the ball doesn't go where you want it to go. Yeah. And we get turnovers. Right. Unless you of course hit the quarterback so hard he fumbles. <laughs> so, um, but it, it's still, you know, I'm going to talk about the Miami dolphins. I, and I've watched their games and then I, I actually looked up numbers, which I usually don't do because I don't care about the numbers. You know, I, I don't, I'm not an analytics guy. I go by my eye and tell. But Cameron Wake and Robert Quinn, as I've watched all three games, and, you know, they're outside rushers, I think, man, they're doing a great job of getting pressure. Right. And, and just, you know, they're making the quarterback. You can see that they're like, oh, i got to throw. Right. And then I look up their numbers, and guess what they got in sacks? Yeah, like one each. They both have one. Right. And and I just go, it's amazing because yeah. when I watch the game, I think, well, they're going to have like eight sacks between them or something like that. You know, not that many after three games, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. so they're all over the place. It's it's yeah, numbers, man. I say it all the time. They they lie so much in football, and they they really lie for quarterbacks. You know, guys that that really. Like oh, you Mark mean like Mariano. how Ryan fits? What do you say about his game down in, in Jacksonville last week? What number do you put on that? Mariota. Oh. You know, how about the fact that Ryan Fitzpatrick has more passing yards in his career than Troy Aikman? <laughs> That's amazing. It is. Hey, look, these numbers and Christopher, I, the one thing I wanted to finish answering about yeah. all this, remember right. what's going on and what is it? The league wants more scoring and more passing yards and they kind of, and they, of course they want their starting star quarterbacks to stay healthy. That's it. So they're going to do whatever it takes. And they'll be the happiest when every game, the first one to 40 wins. Yeah, that's disgusting. Because people can relate to that. Right. They're not you and me when I'm watching a game and it's 7-3 to three or 10-7. to seven, I'm going, oh, I love it. Yes. Can't wait to see the coaches jump the same this way. decision up. Oh, you yeah. Know. The, you know, and I like, but the fans just go, oh, boring game. They, they're both playing terrible. Well, no, they're not. Right. I mean, you know, the, Phil, they're, they're too busy on InstaFace. <laughs> InstaFace. Well, you know, the day is coming, though, but the, 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 you just won't be able to do it. As great as even some of these de- – I look at Jacksonville, as great as they are, you know, still some of the rules and just all the stuff that's going on, uh, that they – every rule is almost made for the offense. not all. There's been a lot for the defense, too. But that you can even move the ball against some of these great defenses now, which you could not have done in the past. Yeah. Love you, Phil. I hope Matt signs. It's going to be awesome. Now, wait. Hey, I did like your show uh, last Wednesday. Very good. Thank you. You. Know, you too. I have to give you a little credit. I'm not just going to, you know, it was clever. You're, you're actually kind of funny. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's good. That's good. Now, we're going to shoot a show here next week. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if it's next week. We haven't confirmed that yet. We are going to do something at your oh, house. Oh, just let yeah. me be hanging. You know, don't worry. Dude. Let me know at the last. Second. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll get back on that. I don't know what. I don't know what the hell they decided. I didn't give well, you a final know. answer. If you're gonna come here and you're gonna, you know, ruin my day. Right. I won't probably be able to go to a good game that night, which is gonna really upset me. But it, I want you know, let's get some good stuff. Okay. So you know what segment we're shooting at your house, right? No. We're playing ping pong, you and me, on camera. No, you know what we're going to do on camera? I got boxing gloves downstairs. I'm going to knock your ass out. What's going to happen? <laughs> Sounds like a great my, segment. You know what my gl- boxing gloves have on them? It says Ali, Muhammad Ali. Never so, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that sounds uh, perfect. All right, you get it knocked out by Phil. Day. That's See a very great headline. See ya. <laughs> Phil Sims knocks out producer. He does have Muhammad Ali signed autograph gloves. 
So it'd yes. be honored to get knocked out by Phil. It would be. I would love to do a quick round and get like one shot on Phil and he like loses his cool. Point of the pressure thing. That's that's the thing though. I mean, just to like accentuate that point, Jacksonville Jaguars, 17th in football in sacks. Okay. The what team were we just talking about? The Miami Dolphins, 24th in football in sacks. 30 29th is the Los Angeles Rams. But again, it is like it's a stat that lies. It's about making the quarterback un- feel uncomfortable. And I, I don't know why I'm just. I'm surprised to hear your dad is not an analytics guy. I always <laughs> thought that he was just going to be numbers. What's numbers, really numbers. funny is I feel like he's <laughs> like he like looks at the number of sacks as an analytic. Oh, like that, passing that's yards. Deep that's it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, that's it, guys. That was it. Good. good. Yeah, we went Ooh. over a lot of your notes on Monday. You covered four or five games on Monday. Okay. I mean, is there anything else you didn't really get? I know that you watched Pittsburgh, Tampa, and I want to preview the game actually on Thursday night before we go. Okay. But Pittsburgh, Tampa, did anything that didn't pop out to you on TV pop out to you on the film? I think I don't love Pittsburgh's defense and what they're doing. I do do a little self scout because you were all over their defense before. Yeah. I still question their ability to really confuse teams in the back end or play sound coverage all the time. The one thing they got back to in this game was doing some unconventional stuff. I love the blitz zone change. Like you talk, heard me talk about Monday. You know, oh, these two guys drop out, but these two guys blitzes. It's still a four man rush, but, but we changed goes, plays. But two right. falls back. Exactly right. Those kind of things. That's where I felt like they did in this game, and they had a good feel for some of the concepts the the uh, Bucks were doing to at least cloud some of those windows. So that would be one thing. I mean. I'm not dead on the the the, che- uh, the Steelers defense. I'm really not. I think it's still got some things you like about it. Yeah. Let's just not forget that they played two out of the three best passing offenses in football. And you think the Fitzpatrick train keeps rolling? I, I don't think it's going to end. He made a lot of really good football plays. I mean, he had some dumb plays, too. I mean, the interception backed up in his end zone. I don't know what he was doing. He tried to throw a hook shot to the tight end 30 yards down the field. He had a guy in his way, and he tried to throw a hook shot, like literally windmill his arm and thought he was going to still get it there. And, of course, he didn't. So that was Fitzpatrick-ish, but I I do. I think they're going to be okay. Other thing, I I don't know. We never got into the, I guess, the Chiefs defense. Oh, yeah. So 49ers did have a lot of running success with Matt Breida. Yeah. Chiefs defense. I, I look at the Chiefs. They will lose a game eventually where yeah. Mahomes has a pick or two or there's a fumble, and then the other team is able to run the ball and control the clock most of the game. Yes. That's the way it looks like how you beat the Chiefs. Yeah, I think it is the only way. The, the thing is right now is I have no feel for the Chiefs defense right now. How can you? They're up 14 like that every Exactly game. right. So they never have had to really play any pressure-packed snaps of football yet. Mahomes also, I feel like, because of that, gets the ball back so quickly. I mean, they got the ball the first five times, and the game was 35-7. to seven. Yes, I mean, incredible. So they get to play at a luxury, but they are dangerous, and they can be unconventional too. They are not a real good defense, but they do have playmakers at key areas, I think, that can be interesting there. And also on third down, that would be the other thing. Bob Sutton on third down, if they get you there, then they got you. It's first and second that are the issue. And Why? I, third down, he'll do some crazy stuff, and it's an obvious passing down, and I think it confuses the quarterbacks. First and second down, they can blow coverages. Kyle exposed their run fits a few times in the run games, changed the formation on them, and all of a sudden you go, damn, that safety was rolled over here, but they went in motion, now they rolled the safety the other way. Well, nobody's got this run gap over here. What the hell are we doing? Like, uh, it, so it was little things that, like that that came up in the game. Not sold on them, but with that, the way, the way they play football, they should never be this sound, bend, don't break defense. They should attack all the time. I take mean, chances. If you're get in the a, ball back to the exactly offense. right. If you're in a close game, don't sit there and be like, "Oh, we're going to bend and don't break and keep our offense off the field for 15 minutes." No, blitz, do something, make a play, or they get, score a touchdown and you give the ball back to Mahomes. Because yeah, I have more faith in Mahomes scoring consistently. That's their than best the defense teams. right now, right? Uh, and then the other thing is the Niners. They went winless with C.J. Beathard last year. Yeah. Is that what we're expecting going forward? I mean, I, I would expect him to be better than last year. I do think their offensive line's better to where they can dominate running fo- football games that way. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm concerned. I mean, I'm going to have a hard time picking them to beat the Chargers this weekend. I don't see any yeah. possible way. No way. I mean, it would have to be Kyle Magic time. Yes. Uh, Thursday night football. Is Andrew Whitworth 100% out? 
Ooh, yeah, I don't know. I think he. I want to say he is. He no, 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 he's not. The, he did not he's have not. the surgery. That was total. He did. He, oh, think, he wrote news to me, fam. So that injury wasn't. That no, surgery wasn't real. It wasn't real. He said I was getting a massage. I believe if I remember wow. that correctly, right? Who broke that information. I know. But Talib Peters out. Rams looking like the best full team in the sport right now. Yeah. Good offensive line. Offense is attacking. I feel like they're they're getting the ball down the field in like four plays. Yeah. Defense without the corners, you and, and, and your dad surprisingly think they're going to be fine. Yeah, not as good, but they're going to be okay. Minnesota goes out there, lays an egg against Buffalo. Uh, the week before, they needed a miracle fourth quarter from Kirk Cousins to come back, but he was very impressive. And the week before that, they had a lead over the Niners, but they couldn't put him away. The questions about the Vikings, no Everson Griffin. Pat Fline is back at center, but even he wasn't that good in his rookie year. The interior offensive line is an issue for Minnesota, but a lot of people are going, Diggs Thielen should have a big game on a Rams defense that doesn't have their starting corners. How do you see this game kind of fleshing out? Uh, Zimmer has come out and says, great, short week, and you're making us fly across the country. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we have yet to see an away team win on Thursday night football. Mm-hmm. Granted, we saw the Baker Mayfield experience last week. Yeah. How do you see this one playing out? Cousins did not play well last week. Forget the fumbles. He missed some throws. He was off last night, uh, last week. So that worries me a little. I, d- I don't think they're going to put the Rams are going to put their corners in position a whole lot that they're going to have to man up on them throughout the game, at least on a consistent basis. I'm not sold on the DeFilippo offense yet. I'm not. I think it has some like. What is the DeFilippo it's, offense? It's West Coast at its base, right? He is, I would say, a little bit more of a base offense than, let's say, a Mike McCarthy or a Daryl Bevel I used to get on up Compared in Seattle. Compared to the Eagles offense, which is where he came from last yeah, year. Yeah, it's not quite as creative as the Eagles. It's like a dumbed down Eagles version, where not as quite as the aggressive passing concepts I think that the Eagles have or have the capability of drawing That's up. That's good to know. Right. So I look at it, it like that. That looks like it may have gone more with Frank Reich. So, uh, right. So I, I look at this with Filippo and go, man, I'm not quite sure about it yet. I certainly worry, even with Elfline back, that interior part of their D-line. We don't know if Dalvin Cook's going to play either. Right. So we're probably going to start Latavius Murray again. And damn, if I'm the Rams without no Everson Griffin and they the Vikings like to play the same 11 people pretty much on the field the whole game, damn, I'm going to hurry go, up. Hurry. I'm definitely doing that to them. I mean, they should be a well-oiled machine. Uh, as you saw in the uh, the our show, uh, we switched from Ali to Ira. Ira, if you're listening, good luck. Uh, he went with Minnesota plus six and a half. Mm. You said on the show you're definitely going Rams. You're definitely going Rams. I'm definitely going Rams. I know you six see points as... is a lot. It's just scary, but I do. I think they're in a class of their own right now. I really do. And I just the mad scientist is he's on a tear. He's found he's cracked the code every week, like instantly to where you're like, damn, it's the fourth play. And he knows everything they're doing from a coaching perspective. Are you more likely to go with the coach in Zimmer who knows who they are and sticks to that on a short week or the guy that typically takes the whole week to draw some stuff up? Yeah. It definitely hurts McVay more. That's what I think. I think the short week always helps the lesser talent, the lesser coach Create, team. Yeah, right. I, I do think it hurts them. I think they have enough in their offense, though, that it's going to really annoy Zimmer, too, to where he's going to be scared to do certain things. Because, you know, damn, if they run this play and I bring that blitz, they can really hurt me. It doesn't sound like you're going to question the Rams at all. Like, it sounds like really anyone in this spot, you were going to feel pretty confident in the Rams. Uh, yes, I, I feel pretty confident in the Rams. I think the Rams are, like I said, I'm not backing away from my Jaguars thing either. I still think the Rams and the Jaguars are the two best teams in football. You know, it's a lot going to depend on number five down in Jacksonville. If number five in Jacksonville could just have thrown the ball at a average level for an NFL quarterback last week, they would have won that game. And I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just telling you that they would have won the game. But there was plays that were there to be had that were left out there, and that's why they lost 9-6. to six. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so I'm not even going to try and make any picks. That's for tomorrow. Don't do it. Wait for tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, All right, so that was uh, Phil Sims joining us. We broke down some games and enjoyed the story of what Matt Sims is really going through right now. I really hope he gets signed. If he gets signed, I feel like we should buy his jersey and put it up. Yeah, I think you're right. Right? Yeah, we'll do uh, something like Sims that. A Sims Niners jersey? <laughs> right. I look good. <laughs> Think about it. That's what your dad should have been with Bill Walsh oh, like 34 Damn. years ago. Gosh, gosh. I'd just be living off his Super Bowl money hey, then. Can you get us this freaking news? 
News? Yeah, the Matt Sims news. We you want me to, to be on it. first? Yeah, we okay. need to be all over. All From right. your Twitter account. Okay. You haven't tweeted in over a year. Yeah, we'll go Sports, Sims you're the Lefko. sports by Brooks of Bleacher. I am. We'll go to the Sims and Lefko Twitter account. But all right, I will actually say something to them that I want to break this if Good. this does happen. Good. Okay. That'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, four Sims. Peace out, homies. The news breaker. Four Fendrick. Good evening, everybody. And the L-E-F-K-O-E. Man. Uh, holla, 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 holla. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Eat that, Josh. Holla, holla.